You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? I guess we could stay a little longer if you think there's more to find. The very old beaver's repair list. That's the story where the princess's house gets damaged by a storm and the animals help her fix it. Yeah. What did they do to fix it again? Oh god. What is this? The beaver fixes the house. Alright, speed read. Ready? Uh, the beaver fixes the house. Once upon a time in an ancient and deep forest, there lives a wise princess in a big wooden house. One not a particularly violent story. Shook the house and shook the shingles off the roof. Okay, shingles off the roof. So roof is first. So roof. Roof. Walls. It shook the beams where the house stood, blowing the whole thing near the ground. The princess hid in a closet. And the house would come down on her as she slept. In the morning, the house was still standing, but it was badly damaged. A storm blows shingles off the roof and planks off the wall and even bent a post on. So I guess like a post, I guess? The first two things she could fix, um, but the last concerned her. What will I do? Despaired in the wise princess for, for though she knew many things, she didn't know how to fix the big wooden house. Just then the old bear came by to see if the princess had any trouble in the storm. When he found her nailing planks back in place, he said, stop princess, let me do that for you. I'm happy to do it, said the princess, but if you want to help with the roof, you may. When the pair were done with the roof and the walls, they examined the bent support post. Throw my body against it, said the old bear. I'm very large. He uh, stretched up to his hind legs, being sure the princess could appreciate how very large he was. Then charged straight at the post. He threw his body against it with an impressive thud. The impact moved the post, but too far, and it ended up bent in the other direction. Oof. Uh, the wise princess decided more precision was needed. She thought then of the very old beaver who kept an excellently crafted dam. Perhaps she can help. She went looking for the very old beaver and found the in industrious animal hard at work, slapping down mud on a part of her dam. I had been blown apart in the storm. Most of the structure was unharmed because the beaver was very good at building things. Princess knew she had come to the right place. Beaver, she said, my house was damaged in the storm. She helped me fix it. I believe I could do that, yes, said the very old beaver. She paused at fixing her own den to follow the princess. The very old beaver examined the big wooden house and nodded. Be an easy fix, she said. Uh, and she said about riding the post with loud slaps of her tail. When she was done, the wise princess stroked the beaver's head. Thank you, beaver, she said. Wind blew the shingles off the roof and the planks off the wall and even bent the posts. Now, thanks to you, I still have a home. Think nothing, nothing of it, said the very old beaver. Winter, okay. That winter, the very old beaver grew ill, very ill. She was not able to fix her den nor to gather food. When the princess found out, she set about delivering meals to the beaver. She brought stews of corn and beans and baskets full of bark and twigs from the beaver's favorite aspen. One day, the wise princess noticed that the beaver's den had begun to fall apart. She said about fixing it, and though she was not as talented as the very old beaver, the fix kept the creature warm and dry. Thank you, said the very old beaver. Of course, said the princess. You helped me when the storm blew my house near the ground. Thanks to you, Aggie. You still have a home, and I'm very happy to do the same. The princess continued to nurse the old beaver until the day she came to the dam, and the forest was still. No birds sang, no branches rustled, no small things skittered in the underbrows. Oh, said the princess, staring sadly at the dam, for she knew the old beaver had passed on. Bye, my friend. That was how the very old beaver saved the big wooden house. Okay. So. Shingles. Uh, she fixed the roof shingles. Wall. She fixed the planks that were blown off the walls. She slapped the post with the Easy. Right. Damn. <clears throat> that must have been rough on Eddie. Yeah, he, um, he doesn't really like to talk about her. So the old beaver was Eddie's mom? Dear Mary Ann, you can cover your ears every time I try to have this conversation with you. So I don't think I have a better chance doing this uh, in a letter. I know you don't like saying goodbye, so I'll keep my melancholic rambling short and sweet. I want to thank you with all my heart for taking care of me these past few months. I can't even imagine how exhausting it must have been for you to look after a sick old lady when you have when you also have two small children at home. I know you want me to keep fighting the, this disease and hoping for recovery, but it's always been a great strength of mine to know when it's time to let go. That time has come. I'd like to ask you one last favor. Please take care of Eddie after I'm gone. My poor boy puts on a brave front ever since his father died, but I know he's in pain. I'd be so much more at peace knowing he still has his family. He, he could teach the kids how to fish. He loves spending time with them. Thank you for the warmth and the peace he brought to my life. Give the kids a kiss for me, will you? Carol. Next. The Crafty Goblin's Good Deeds. Of course. The goblins had to help out the creatures of the forest to pay off their debt to the pelican. Uh, well, what did they do? Yeah. Alright, hold on, hold on. What are they? What was it? The goblins... Do something? 
save the old beaver? No. Oh? Wait, no, I don't really remember. Remove the thorn. Scratch. Feed. Hug. Help. Drop the beehive. Let's drop the beehive! Flickin forgives. Wait. Oh, yeah, there. All right, we're speed reading again. Get ready. Uh, once upon a time in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins in a cave below a big wooden house. They lived it with a wise princess who shared as much food with them as she was able. It was never quite enough. This left the goblins hungry, very hungry, always hungry. One day they were out foraging for food. The pious pelican landed on a rock and dumped a smorgasbord from her beak. Which the goblins knew was magic and never empty. There were king crabs in red, blue, gold, and scarlet, veiny blue shrimp, pink shelled scallops, oblong brown clams, purple shiny, purple spiny urchins, and even one prickly red sea cucumber. The food just kept coming. They watched as the pelican ate one clam and then took a nap. You think she would be? She would mind if we just took a little? One asked. Uh, asked one of the goblins to the other. Her beak never empties, and she won't possibly miss a couple of crabs. Said the second, licking her lips. Uh, they were agreed, and so they crept over, flinched, filched. That's a word I haven't seen. Filched some crab and ran. Uh, the goblins scarped the crabs. When they finished, they found they were still hungry. You almost a handful of shrimp, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarped the shrimp, but when they were finished, they found that they were still hungry. Maybe also a few scallops, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarped the scallops. When they were finished, they found that they were still hungry. So they went back for clams, and then urchins, and finally even the sea cucumber. Finally, they were not hungry, but they, there was also nothing left. Just then the pelican woke up. What happened to my food? Uh, she asked, unable to lie about it, the goblin confessed her crimes. Uh, the pelican was dismayed, but she was a terrible-hearted bird, and she could tell the crafty garden were growing little creatures. Um, goblin said the pious pelican, I will share you with my food, but you must in return follow my example, be as generous with the others as I am with you. Take that to heart, and I will consider your debt paid. But we have nothing to give, said the goblins. You have you have your nimble hands and your crafty brains and your loving heart, said the pelican. The crafty goblins realized how much they had to give, and for the rest of the day, they looked for ways to help with the creature. They found the stalwart moose. Struggling with an itchy, hard to reach spot on his back. So, Moose is first. So, Moose. Moose. Uh, blah, 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 blah. uh, Old Bear is next. So, Bear. Uh, Tom dropped it. Finally, they found the Princess. So, then, Princess. Uh, did it feel good being as generous as it did, said the goblins. I'm glad, said the pelican. We all have problems, uh, but if everyone goes about with generosity in their hearts, there's always someone at hand, on hand to help. But we must commit to do so. Uh, cool. Sick. So then... What is this? What did I say? Moose? Crafty goblins, good deeds. Of course. The go they gave the stalwart moose a good scratch on the back. They broke open the beehive for the bear. They hugged the princess when she was crying. Easy clap, let's go. Our lives would have been so different if their friendship hadn't gone to shit. Ugh. Uh, the Pelican Crossing is a special specialty gift boutique located near the O'Shea Glacier catering to Gastineau. Um, channel tourists as well as Dellos Crossing local. We specialize in an assortment of high quality products from home accessories, handmade souvenirs, personalized apparel, locally made art. The Pelican Crossing will be the first store to act as a relay between the buzzing art and craft scene and customers. In addition to a wide array of novelty handcrafted products, uh, the consumer will enjoy friendly and knowledgeable customer service from Vecchi store co-owner Tessa Vecchi and up and coming artist Marianne Ronan. This business plan is prepared to obtain financing in the amount of 20000 to purchase inventory and to help cover the expenses in the first year of operations. In year one, the Pelican Crossing plans to break even and in year two, we plan to generate a moderate profit. Working on the executive summary, part of our business plan. What do you think? Tessa. Yo, Allison, we weren't even done reading and you're already over here. Old bear's gifts for the princess. I'm totally blanking on that story. What did he give her again? All right, old bear's gifts. The bear, is it the bear and the princess, you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, more speed reading, ready? Uh, once upon a time in the ancient deep forest, the old bear stood on the bank of the river, swiping at salmon on, on their way to the spawning grounds. Just as he got his paw on a particularly fat one, he heard a woman shouting for help. He considered simply eating his salmon, but then she screamed again, and he lumbered over to investigate. After a short walk, he found the princess clinging to the top of the tree while a wolf snarled and snapped at the base of the tree. Old bear would normally not get in the middle of such a situation. After all, as a fellow predator, he understood the wolf's needs to hunt. When he saw the princess, he was struck by her beauty, and he knew he had to help. 
With a great roar, the bear heaved onto his hind legs, rising to his full height. The wolf snapped and snarled in his direction, but the bear roared again. The wolf took off into the trees, tail between his legs. Fuck a wolf. Yeah, the bear is Sam. The moose is Eddie. Um, who else was there? Pelican Tessa. Um, the beaver was Eddie's mom, Carol. Uh, the old bear fell back down onto all fours and stared at, up at the princess. She regarded him fearfully. You can come down, he said. How do I know you didn't save me just so you could eat me yourself, asked the princess. I suppose this is a fair question, admitted the old bear, but I promise I won't eat you. Uh, the princess had no reason to trust the old bear except that he had kind eyes, and so she slowly made her way down this, the tree. When she reached the ground, the bear only watched her, and she supposed that she was not going to be eaten today. Thank you, she told the old bear. Of course, he said. Can I walk you back to your home? Of course, said the princess. And so the princess and the old bear walked together through the forest, back to the big wooden house. After that day, the princess would occasionally find gifts from the bear. Here we go. A fresh caught salmon. So we got... Ay, cabron, oh my god. So we got salmon. Uh, salmon. Uh, la, 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 la. Blue or ripe berries, a newly bloomed bluebell. So berries, bluebell, tastes just like the good old days. Uh, one spring, when a sudden thaw flooded the path out of the princess's home, the old bear was there. She rode his back across the river. The old bear began to think that the princess should be his mate. After all, she had no mate, and she needed one, and he could keep her warm, and provide her as much a much more suitable den, and catch fish for her. A protector from wolves. She, in turn, would brush out his fur and pick berries without smushing half of them. It scratched at one part of his back he couldn't reach. How she took care of the goblin, she would be an excellent mother for his cubs. Uh, one day the old bear came with a ring of spruce and asked the princess to be his bride. I'm sorry, said the princess. You're a very good friend and I appreciate all you've done for me, but I cannot marry you. You're a bear. I'm a princess. It would never work. The old bear was crushed. Can we still be friends? He asked. We will always be friends with the princess, but I will never marry you. Um, the old bear and the princess carried on their friendship, and after one year, he tried again to ask her to be his bride. Once again, she refused them. This happened one year later, and one year after that. Finally, the princess said, Old bear, you are my dear friend, and I appreciate all you have done for me, but I would sooner you have left me to the wolves than marry you. That is how it will always be. I have my hands full with the two goblins who live under my house. They are all I need. That wounded the old bear deeply, but it was finally enough to stop his proposals. They remained friends, and he continued to give her gifts of fresh salmon and ripe berries and newly bloomed bluebells. The old bear never uh, asked the princess to be his bride, much as he might have wanted to, and that is how the princess befriended the old bear and how she refused him. Why don't we open up the book and check? What was it? Salmon. How do I know which one's salmon? This one's salmon. Fresh caught salmon. And then, bu 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 berries. Some roses, maybe. Fuck, I'm big dumb. Maybe not. A newly bloomed bluebell. Wait. A handful of ripe berries. A newly bloomed bluebell. Let's go. Let's go. Nice. Man. The puzzle yeah, master. Bad. Just couldn't let go. Oh man. All right. Here we go. Here's Sam getting rejected. Uh, sorry for the note under the door, like a prison inmate. You okay? I stopped by and rang a couple times this week, but you didn't answer. I could see the light in the hayloft, so figured you were in, but didn't want to talk. I hope I didn't ruin everything. I know I probably came on kind of strong, but the thing is, I I don't know how to talk to a woman like you. You're strong and kind, and you know so much, it's hard for me to know how to keep up. I guess all that went to my head. But I want you to know I got the message, and I'm gonna get out of your hair now, and there doesn't need to be any bad feelings. You pass in the street and say hello, or not. Okay. Yes, I noticed your car was leaking, so I put some sealing in there. I need to take it to the shop, though. Let me know if you want me to come with you, because sometimes these guys try to rip you off. Not, no big deal. Sam. The crafty goblin's loot. That's from the princess and the two thieves. That's I from the princess the original. and the two thieves. Okay. Um, Sam was married, if I'm not mistaken, right? To a girl named Laura. Oh, that's where I got Laura from. And I think, I think he has a kid too, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe I'm big dumb. I think he was married. 
Um, the Princess and the Two Thieves. Once upon a time in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. The house was built from strong wood in the forest, and it kept the princess warm and safe. The princess was not a native to the forest, but she never spoke about where she had come from, for it made her cry. She did not have many friends, but that was how she liked it. The forest was big and deep, and many paths led to her house. Not many visitors passed by. The princess was happy to be left alone in the big house in the deep forest. She knew that the forest would provide for her, but that... Its generosity had to be respected, so she only took what she needed. And for a long time, life was just fine for the princess in the big wooden house. Uh, one winter day, when the snow blanketed the earth and ice bent the trees low, the wise princess realized that food was disappearing from her house. It was not much at first, only a few fruits and nuts and eggs vanishing during the night. Maybe it's the birds, she said, or the mice. And for a time, the princess was okay with losing some food for the winter. Uh, for the winter was long, and little creatures needed to eat too. But then small items started to disappear as well. Spoons and plates, forks and knives, and blankets. It's as if every time she was in one part of the house, something disappeared in another room. That can't be birds or mice, said the princess. I think I have a thief. So, she went outside to look for traces in the snow and noises in the wind. There was nothing to be found, nor to be heard. That's strange, said the princess. Maybe the thief is hiding inside my house. For many days she hunted, looking behind the curtains and under the bed, the attic and the chimney, behind the poles and under the carpets. But she found nothing. And as she searched, food kept on disappearing, night after night. I'll make a cake, from the princess. A big cake with every egg and fruit and nut I still have. That I only have one thing to keep my eye on. I spent the whole day making the cake, using everything she had left. The cake she made was so big she could hardly carry it. If I manage to protect the cake, I'll be able to survive the long winter, she said. So she added a lock to the oven, and she kept the big cake safe inside. But the next morning, the lock had been opened, and the cake had disappeared. At first, the princess cried because that cake was, lo was the last of her food until the snow melted. Then she noticed two trails of tiny feet in the spilled flour. She followed the tracks to a hidden hatch in the floorboards. That's how the uh, princess realized that the two tiny thieves were living under the wooden house right below her feet. Cake? Okay, so... And I distinctly remember drawing that cake, which is arguably the best part of that illustration. All right, Picasso. And what, you are, probably what are we remember stealing? What the goblins stole in that story, huh? A dub uh... cake, yeah. I'm pretty sure they stole some eggs. Do I have to do it in order? Maybe not. Did they steal candy? No. Actually, I'm not sure. Maybe they took some of the princess's fruit? I think they stole eggs, too. I'm pretty sure they stole some eggs. Some flour for the cake, maybe? Wait. What if they took some spoons? Easy. That's it. I always wondered where that drawing went. She said it was her favorite, and then one day it just disappeared. You're the best mom in the world, the prettiest princess. The prettiest princessa. Well, we got everything. I'm a puzzle master, by the way. You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? Either I think way, we got everything. I'm ready for this to be over. Me too. What are we waiting for? I want to know who was here that night. I'm, I'm right behind you, Allison. Excuse me, girl? Let's try and remember who Marianne was arguing with. What if it's Tom? Vecchi is our father? I knew it! It had to be. <laughs> Tessa knew, didn't she? Yeah, she, she must have. That's what she didn't want to tell us. God, Marianne and Tom? I know. Ugh. What should we do now? Yeah, call him out here and make him tell us what was going on. And if he won't? We know his secret. He will. <laughs> Just be like, hey, Tom, Dad. It's Allison. We need to talk. We know it was you. We'll kill him.
We already killed our mother. You don't think we'll kill him too? <laughs> Holy shit. That was terrible. I knew it was Tom, dude. I called it. Did I call it? I actually don't remember what I said. I'm pretty sure I said Tom. Let me take the lead on this. I know him better. Please don't make me make decisions. Anyway, sure. Whatever. As long as we get answers. Yeah, they were friends and Tom. I knew it. He was a piece of shit. He has a gun though. We're dead. They have the same eyes. Kids, listen. You're our father. <laughs> yes. You knew how bad it got out here. How little we had. Why didn't you help Marianne? You mean all the money she wanted? We didn't have anything to spare. Well, that winter was rough on everyone. It, you would have starved out here if not for all the free food we gave you. Don't act like you had anything to do with that. That was all Tessa. That's a cruel presumption, young man. Well, maybe it was Tessa's idea initially. But I supported it. And your mother was happy to live off our handouts. You tried to burn down our barn and knocked Tyler unconscious. I never meant to hurt anybody. You weren't supposed to be home. Doesn't excuse the fact that you didn't even stop to help. What do you want me to say? I panicked. I was terrified that this whole thing was going to blow up in my face. I had to do something. Burn down the barn. Oh my god. Wait. I don't know what should we do. So what do we do now? We tell him he's got to fix the mess he made, one way or another. Can I say this too? You failed us, Tom. You need to make it right. I'll do whatever you want. Yeah, she she died as because as none of this gets she out. got stabbed and she fell into the lake. Excuse and then she, me? She died by drowning. You want me to pay for my mistakes? Fine. But please, Tessa can't know. Tessa can't? So Is it kill her? Tessa doesn't know? Tessa already knows, Tom. No. That's... That's impossible. It never occurred to you the reason Tessa cut Marianne off was you? I... but she... she never said anything. Oh, Lord. You should try talking to your wife. That's... Maybe if you had, we wouldn't be in this situation. Talking to your significant other is... And maybe Marianne wouldn't be dead. Actually, a good thing. Come on. You of all people should appreciate how troubled Marianne was. She was unhinged. Something like this would have happened sooner or yeah, later. Yeah, not cheating is a good step one. That was convenient for you, huh? You preyed on her because she was vulnerable. And you knew you could always blame it on crazy Marianne Ronan if you got caught. It was nothing like that. Nothing at all. Your mother was... a very pretty woman. Oh... Dude, Allison's face. so many places and done so many things. Dude, they the have the same I eyes. I always thought I would. Got caught up. Love made me a fool. Look, I made mistakes. But this will not go any further than the three of us. Why? We know. Tessa knows. Marianne's dead. There's no point in hiding it anymore. 
He's afraid it'll tank his campaign. Yeah. Am I wrong? Jesus, Tom. Tom, what the fuck? I've kept your secret all these years. I don't want to go spilling it, but I will if I have to. What? Yeah. Your little story about self-defense. I've never told anyone how Mary and Minnie died. That night, I came out here because I was worried about your mother. Oh, no. Right, we got we gotta kill him. Oh my god. Why do they do it? They made me do it. They made me do it. Why did they show it? This is fault. This is his fault. She could 100% see him right there. You're right, he's still 100. Yeah, that's still self-defense, though. No! No way! You're a fucking liar! I saw what I saw. Ugh! You're manipulating us just like you manipulated her! Tyler! You're not listening to this, are you? Be smart about this, Allison. Are you sure you want this to get out? You've got way more here to lose than he does. His name will be all but clear, but you... You'll be a killer. What will your uncle say? He already knows! And Michael? Hmm? Well, the whole town might turn on you. Don't touch her. <clears throat> you know I'm right. Just get out of here, Tom. Tyler and I need to talk alone. Just please. Think twice before making any rash decisions. There are a whole lot of <laughs> lives at stake here. <laughs> Stab wood in the back the with fuck alone. And never come back. Oh, jeez. Allie, you okay? He didn't let that asshole get to you, did you? Did you? What if he's right? Should have killed him. I've been having all of these nightmares about that night. And they were a lot like how Tom said. And now, when I try to remember, that's all I can see. He's trying to mess with your head, and you're letting it work. No, it's more than that. 
Ever since we started digging, I... I haven't been able to shake this feeling like something's off. Something's off because he put this in your head. Don't let him get away with it. He might not be lying. We, we keep getting things mixed up. We remember totally different versions of the past. Those are just details. This isn't that. She was going to kill me. I'm not so sure anymore, Tyler. Please don't make me choose. She had a gun pointed at me. She chased me. She said she was going to kill me. Please, I swear to don't make me choose. I can't. She threatened Tom with those exact same words. With the same gun on the same pier. The thing you said to Eddie the other day got thrown back at me. Don't you think it's possible that happened here, too? I guess it's possible. Fuck. I, I don't know. And we're never gonna know the truth, are we? Because the second you walk away from something... That's it. Yeah. I guess at this point, you just have to decide what you believe. Don't make me choose, please. Me? Yeah. You need to start dealing, Allie. And that means coming to terms with whatever version of the past feels the most true to you. No more running. Whatever you choose, you gotta live with it, okay? Don't make me choose. Don't do this to me. Oh, God damn it. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm going to kill you! I'm gonna... I'm going to kill you! I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh my god! D this is the perfect time to I'm throw up. Achoo! We're doing this one! Even though this one doesn't make sense, dude! No! No! <laughs> She loved us. Why would she kill us?
I think she snapped. She snapped because. She, she had to snap. She because the social services were gonna come take her kids away, and she couldn't lose another kid, right? But I don't think she would. I'm going to kill you. No. I'm not gonna hurt you. Why does it do this to me? I'm not gonna hurt you. Maybe she, th th she she went insane. What if she went insane and was just like. Like, why was she running around with a shotgun? Right? I'm going to kill you! Why did she grab the shotgun if she wasn't gonna do something with it? <laughs> I'm doing it, fuck it. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> I, she didn't know that Tom was coming. She didn't know that Tom was coming. I'm going to kill you! So, like, if she didn't know that Tom was coming... If she didn't know that Tom was coming, why would she have the shotgun, right? I'm not gonna hurt you. I think this is making, like, me not want to pick this because it says Tom's version. And fuck that guy. All my homies hate that guy. I'm going to kill you! Yeah, maybe t t Tom's a piece I'm of shit, so maybe he's doing it. We're, we're doing this one. My. I'm set. We're doing I'm it. I'm going to kill you! I'm going to kill you! No, don't do this. Yeah, how could he hear? 100%. He's going to kill her! He's eating her! Let's Tom was lying. <laughs> Marianne couldn't face being separated from her kids again. And the only way to make sure that never happened... ...was for all of us to go together. I know it in my heart. Do I, I though? I saved you. I saved us. I know. Did the right thing. I'm gonna throw up. You wanna go back inside? Yeah. Throws up violently, yeah, dude. I do I need to make a throw up command. Yeah, the classic don't nod. So the ending to life is strange. I was, I didn't have any trouble making the last hey, decision. Hey, keep what in I just found downstairs. Strange. But this one what got me, man. A little have aged well, or just gone bad. <laughs> I also killed Chloe. <laughs> What if I picked wrong? Don't be sad, Allison. I can't. I don't want you to be sad. Cheers, I guess. They <laughs> over. I killed Chloe I can't so Tom fast. By that story. That I almost did. Yeah, I still can't believe he and Marianne. What the hell did yeah, she see in it? Did his job. She was probably just. Really, really lonely after she lost Leo. I could never get that lonely. Listen, with everything that's been going on, it got me thinking. I was just like, about our voice. Chloe's mom worked so hard, there was no like, way I was gonna let her die. But maybe we should stop using it. What? I just don't trust it. And I think we'll be better off without it. I mean, what if you just talk to this each other? You don't morning, have to do the memory thing. I kept getting these horrible visions. Of you and Marianne and Eddie. Visions? Like our memories? Yeah, but, but different. It was all my worst thoughts brought to life. 
You were in my bedroom saying I abandoned you. Eddie called me a snake. I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. It's okay. I was the one who walked out. I just... I can't let that happen again. I... I don't think it will. Something's been pushing us to find answers. And now we have them. Maybe I'm wrong. And if it stays bad, we can stop. But... I really want to keep what makes us... us. Yeah, Wonder Twin Powers activate. The Mad Hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the Moon Hag. But she did not kill him. Because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted what do you the day think? he would emerge. Brothers and sisters. To once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. Always. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the mad hunter. So are we going... Yeah, I'm super pumped for Little Hope, yo. Did I win? Can I get an epilogue? Six months later, epilogue. I have little hope in it. He. <laughs> he cut his hair. <laughs> Wait, why did he cut his hair though? One last look. We're good to go. Yeah, this is a true bad end. Yeah, he looks good with his old K. I don't know why he cut it though. Hey, it's me. Hey, me. <laughs> House is empty. I'm getting ready to head out. So, last chance. Is there anything you want me to do while I'm in town? Listen, Ty, you're dropping off the keys with Tina, right? Yep, gonna leave them at her office on my way to the ferry. Well, that's it then. How's Juno? Big and yeah, full of yeah. people, even without tourists. Michael's been writing up rules for the apartment. I need your support against his whole food policy. Just refuse to sign anything until I get there, okay? Okay, but you better hurry. If he gets his way, we'll only have one small shelf for junk food. What? Heresy. I'm gonna need, like, twice that just for snack cakes after my surgery next month. I know, right? This cannot stand. How are you? Good, actually. Really good. You? Same. You know, emptying the house really cleared my head out. Thanks for doing that. The observatory really needed me this week. And after everything that happened, I, I just felt like I needed to keep some miles between me and Delos Crossing. No worries. Has me on the phone Are too. You still loving your therapist? Around. Gail, yes. I Gail! I was actually just doing some letter writing she assigned me as homework. It really helped me get some perspective. That sounds awesome. 
Uh, did you see the article I sent you about Tom losing the election? Get fucked uh, up. Yes, I saw your message right before derby practice, so I didn't have time to read it. But I did cackle at the headlines. <laughs> <laughs> did you picture Tom's face whenever you went in for a block? <laughs> no, but that is a great idea. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad Tessa finally left his ass. Tessa! Dude, bitch. wait, happy ending! Okay, I'm gonna hang up now. See you tonight. Okay. I'm gonna take one last walk through the house and then head to the ferry. Drive safe. Uh, pretty sure that's the only way yes, possible Tessa. in the old Allison mobile. Love you, Tyler. Love you. But at what cost? <laughs> at what cost was this for? Most wanted escapes. Oh no, the raccoon escaped. Oh no. Must be Chattington app. What? A, no doubt. Yeah, I should be back at our place around four. Only if the mailbox bent him. Hey, making the biscuit thing you like. Damn, on my way, I'll probably take some out some fire hydrants and stuff so that I don't die. Sick. Oh, take. <laughs> right, don't not version of Discord. Uh, dear Allison, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to send this, so I hope it'll reach you. Heard from Laura that you finally sold the house. I'm guessing you'll both be on your way soon. I'm staying in a little cabin on the Tanaki River that the owner's letting me stay if I help fix his boat. It's been nice to start over, but my sponsor at AA says it's important. I don't completely erase the past. It's something about being a part of my history. You two have been an important part of everything, and so I hope you won't mind me writing this letter, even though words and me sometimes get twisted up. Both have your busy lives, and it'd be really great if we can meet sometimes. Step 9 of recovery is about making amends, so I hope that with everything that happened to you guys, uh, you might let old Sam apologize for all the hurt I did. Drive to Juno, or you could even come visit Tanaki. Got a nice pullout, but you'll have to fight for the blanket. <laughs> Just kidding. There's two. One of them's kind of smelly, though. Haha, <laughs> got you again. Um, please take care of yourself, Sam. Got adopted by a stray mutt that hung around the docks. They named her Skipper. Sam! Sam! What, am I just gonna leave Sam's thing here? Somebody's gonna see this and they're gonna be like, Who the fuck is Sam? <laughs> Take the letter! That's my- that's my boy right there, Sam! <laughs> Let's see if anything's in Ma's room. Hey, yo, Ma! Oh. You know university. Does that mean... Huh. Well, at least she finally dumped his ass. Oh, shit. Manila? Where's Manila? In a little cabin like this? As long as I had internet, I'd be good. Uh, I'm writing this letter from Juno. Uh, International Airport, where well, I was soon board a plane to Manila on a missionary assignment. I apologize for not coming in person to say goodbye, but I was called to make the decision alone. Carry out on my own as well. I'm sure you understand that sometimes we must follow without question the prompting of the spirit. I will not be coming back to Delos Crossing for some time. In the Philippines. Okay, thank you. Um, before I go, there's something I feel I must confess to you both. Perhaps because I've never found the strength to confront my husband. I've never been able to forgive Marianne for her betrayal. I truly did love you both like my own children. I always tried to forgive your mother for her unapologetic lifestyle, but when I discovered that you were the fruit of her affair with my Thomas, I wanted her to suffer like I was suffering, and I brought down on your house the wrath I never dared allow to unfold in mine. I've been deeply ashamed all these years, and I'm surprised how much better I feel with it out in the open. The greatest thing about truth is the peace it brings to your life. I hope you can find in your hearts to forgive me. You have taught me once again how love will bring you further in life. That Marianne had been trying to show me all along. Take care of each other always in his steps, Tessa. Okay, Tessa. That's good. She got Sucks to suck. Thomas Anthony Fecky. Sucks to suck! Idiot. Wait, wait, wait. What did it say about Uncle Sucks to suck. 
Thomas Anthony Fecky. Uh, uh, is no secret among the public safety crisis, and, uh, especially those living in far remote communities. Those crossing police chief Edward has settled making a difference. Has been working for years to draw attention to what he views as the failures of Alaskan law enforcement. Today, Brown visited the criminal in Anchorage to present the case for new measures to fight for this crisis, pointing the finger at an overburdened state courts that failed to recognize tribal sovereignty. Shared supervision of publicly funded law enforcement. This is compact. Nice. Good job, Uncle Eddie. Yeah, I blame Tom too. Fuck Tom. All my homies hate Tom. How are you gonna cut your hair, Tyler? What the fuck? That was quick. <laughs> Allison's cute. Yeah, Eddie did- I think Eddie did good job. He did a good job. He did- And he was young when it all went down too, so... Good job, Eddie. Goodbye, room. Goodbye, room. Goodbye, man on the moon. Man on the moon. For posterity. For posterity. The moose wallpaper. How are you gonna cut your hair, Tyler? Yeah, time to post it on Insta. Lean on me. When you're not strong. All right, thanks Certainly for hanging, Impulse. I appreciate you being Mr. here. Mrs. Fix it. Thanks, Impulse. I hope you enjoyed the game. Uh, thanks, thanks for hanging out, dude. Have a good one. Have a good night. Or good morning. Good sleep. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Oh. <laughs> Goblins. It was delightful. <laughs> well, this is goodbye for real. I guess. I think Allison might have just left the car with hey, Tyler. Hey, Aaron. It's Ty. Tyler Ronan. I, uh... I... Thought I'd catch you on your break between sessions, but I guess you're going long with another rebel with too many causes. <laughs> I I know I haven't reached out since I left Fireweed, but I just wanted to say, well, you were right about grief, about it going in circles. This morning, I was out on the porch, staring at the fog, and my mother, she, she just tumbled right out of me. But it was okay. It actually felt good to remember. Anyway, uh, give me a call back if you get a chance. I'll see you around. And thank you.
Okay. Wins for life. Well, everyone, that was Tell Me Why. I hope you all enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I had... It was nice to play. It was great. I hope everybody got something out of it. Um, Allison, hella cute. What's up, girl? How you doing? Uh, I wish Tyler didn't cut his hair. It looked fine. I thought it looked good. But uh, that's what he wanted, you know. Go for it. Florence Giddard? Sure. Good, good job on that. Book of Golems illustrations. That was some good shit. Um, environment team. Good shit. Everything looks super pretty. I'm about that. And, uh, yeah. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Let's see what everybody else picked. Probably. People actually forced the chest open? I know, I'm all over here, like, failing. See, I was in the minority in this one. Oh, shit. That's when switched to their bond and kept their voice. Only 1% let go of their voice. I do believe that Allison respect, accepted responsibility in the murder. That lost his temper. Yeah, but he's, in, he's doing good now. Sometimes you just gotta be firm with people. Hell yeah, easy clap. Easy boys. Gals. Fucking. You or anyone you know are struggling with suicidal thoughts or experiencing emotional crisis. You can find help using these resources. You matter. We need you in the world. United States. 1-800-273-TALK. Okay. Well then. Well then.